In the world of condiments, there can be only one king. Sure, ketchup has its place, and Chick-fil-A sauce may be a growing threat, but there's just one condiment that goes as good on pizza, burgers, wraps, and wings as it does on carrots and lettuce, and that's creamy, dreamy ranch dressing. But how did ranch become the go-to topping for so many different foods? Today, we're investigating the history of ranch dressing. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History Food channel and let us know in the comments below what other condiments you would like to hear about. All right, let's get chugging. Cheers, I'll drink to that, bro. It was the Great Depression. In Nebraskan cowboy Steve Henson, like millions of others, abandoned the Midwest in pursuit of money elsewhere, maybe buried in a ditch or something. At the age of just 16, he rode the railways west to California. There, he worked odd jobs for over a decade to make ends meet, before he and his high school sweetheart wife, Gail Henson, eventually packed their bags and continued on. The two headed north in 1949 to find their fortunes in Alaska. At this point, Steve had become an established plumber, and he worked for three years out of Anchorage, helping to construct over 2,500 houses. Over the course of his contract, he would also often cook meals for the rest of the crew, and he developed his own unique flavor profile along the way. He'd mix mayonnaise, sour cream, and buttermilk with garlic, onions, MSG, dried parsley, salt, and pepper. You know, all the stuff you typically find at the junk drawer of the house you just rented. And though this concoction would eventually prove more valuable than anything Steve could ever hope to make as a plumber, he'd still made more money then as an Alaska contractor than he'd ever dreamed possible before. Plumbing in the Northwest Territories was a lucrative gig back then. It was the TikTok influencer of 1940s Alaska. After his three-year contract was up, Steve decided to retire at the ripe old age of 35. He and Gail headed back south, where pipes don't freeze nearly as often. They moved to Santa Barbara, where the two kicked back and relaxed for about a year, but Steve quickly became restless. He realized that he still had a lot of life left to live, and he wasn't quite ready for a perpetual vacation. Why not spit in the face of everyone who has to work until the day they drop dead? So they bought a fixer-upper, a rundown 120-acre ranch near San Marcos Pass, just northwest of Santa Barbara. They initially named it Sweetwater Ranch, which sounds like what an alien would call a soda fountain. But Steve and Gale quickly changed Sweetwater to Hidden Valley and got our story back on track. Steve and Gale soon opened their ranch up to guests and it gained a reputation as a party hub, a place where people could let loose and have a good time. What happens in Hidden Valley stays in Hidden Valley. One visiting filmmaker described it as a mixture between a nightclub, a motel, and a dude ranch. But if people were coming for the overnight parties, they were staying for the steaks. Gail would serve as many as 300 steaks per party before sitting down at the couple's organ to serenade their guests, which presumably means that every young cow learns about Gail in history class. These were no ordinary steaks, though. They were made with the flavor profile Steve had cooked up in Alaska. They were a huge success, and soon everyone wanted a taste of the Henson Special. It wasn't long before the couple started sending guests home with jars filled to the brim with a dry ingredient version of Steve's increasingly famous concoction. These jars quickly became the Mickey Mouse ears of Hidden Valley Ranch, only a little more tasty. Well, come to think of it, has anyone actually tried eating the mouse ears? As the buzz around them grew, the couple soon found new buyers for their product. The nearby Cold Spring Tavern, a historic stagecoach stop that opened in 1868 and is still doing business today, became the first business outside of the Hidden Valley Ranch to sell the Henson family dressing. If you're ever looking for an authentic taste of the original ranch recipe, Cold Spring Tavern continues to sell it to this day. They claim that they stayed true to the original Henson family recipe, just as Steve made it all those decades ago. Back to the 1950s, though, a nearby store called Kelly's Corner also began to sell the dressing. In one two-day period, they reportedly sold out their entire stock of Hidden Valley Ranch, a 140-packet supply, leading the owner to believe his employees were stealing them off the shelves. It wasn't long before demand for the Henson family recipe began to grow outside of the Santa Barbara area, and Steve and Gail bought up envelopes in order to mail their flavor powder all across the nation. Sadly, mailing out a bunch of envelopes full of white powder ceased to be an effective marketing strategy after the anthrax scare of the early aughts. At last, people could buy the now famous Henson family recipe for a mere 75 cents per envelope, and they could have it conveniently shipped straight to their door. Once received, customers would add their own buttermilk or mayonnaise to the mix. 
Then, they'd often follow the Henson family practice of putting Steve's flavor profile on just about everything, from salad to pizza to binding legal documents. In some states, a dollop of ranch counts as a notary seal. Envelope prep and distribution rapidly overtook every last room of Hidden Valley Ranch, and by the mid-1960s, it had become the ranch's entire business. The Hensons no longer hosted guests, and the Southwest's cattle population breathed a collective moo of relief. Instead, the Hensons used their ranch to pack and mail dry ingredient packets to all 50 states and over 30 different countries. Their business eventually grew too big for the family to handle alone, and they had to move production off-site by the 1970s. At that point, the powder was made in San Jose's Griffith Laboratories, before heading down to a Los Angeles facility for packaging and distribution. There, the power of industry could stuff and seal 35,000 individual packets of Hidden Valley Ranch every eight hours. Give or take the time each employee presumably spent railing lines of uncut ranch powder. But the actual ranch remained the business's corporate headquarters for the remaining years of the Henson's involvement. In 1972, Steve and Gail sold their business to the Clorox company for $8 million, almost $60 million in today's money. Steve and Gail were both now over 50, so this time, the two finally retired for real. They moved to Reno, and they spent the rest of their days soaking up the desert sun and eating Cobb salads. But there was no rest for Steve Henson's brainchild. With his recipe in hand, the Clorox company moved to capitalize on their newly acquired brand. They quickly found a way to add buttermilk flavoring to their dry ingredient packets. But they knew that if they wanted to compete with other popular vinegar-based salad dressings, they needed to find a way to sell their ranch in a liquid form. The only problem was, they didn't know how to keep the perishable ingredients of ranch dressing from spoiling. Try eating it all really fast. <laughs> that usually works. Clorox put a group of the nation's finest minds to work, and by replacing some of the dressing's more perishable ingredients with oils and soy byproducts, they created the dressing's first shelf-stable form. Their new liquid ranch dressing, with a shelf life of up to 150 days, finally hit stores in 1983. What followed was an explosion of American ingenuity, unrivaled since Edison and Tesla duked things out at the turn of the 20th century. Recipes cannot be copyrighted, and so Clorox had no way to keep competitors from making their own ranch dressings or ranch-flavored products. And if there was one single product that turned ranch from one-hit wonder to all-time classic, it came from Frito-Lay in 1987, just four years after Liquid Ranch Dressing first hit store shelves. That product was the Cool Ranch Dorito. Hmm, <laughs> yeah. Is America falling behind in chip technology? I don't think so. For the first time, customers outside of the Henson family orbit saw ranch as more than just a salad dressing, but as a condiment that could go on absolutely anything and everything. The chips were a hit, and Clorox, of course, wanted in on the success, though we cannot recommend cool Clorox-flavored Doritos. The two companies collaborated to make officially branded Hidden Valley Ranch Wavy Lay's Potato Chips. While not quite as successful as their Doritos counterpart, these chips pushed the nation off the ranchy precipice that had been climbing since 1949. And what came next was an onslaught of never-ending ranch-flavored products. By the time the 90s came around, companies were putting ranch on just about everything. Some even explored making ranch flavors all their own. For example, Chili's had their Chipotle Ranch, while Applebee's debuted their Mexi Ranch. It didn't take long for these ranch variants to make it onto grocery store shelves as well, giving ranch dressing the push it needed to surpass Italian dressing as the most popular salad dressing in America by 1992. Just two years later, Domino's Pizza would change the ranch game yet again, when they began delivering packets of ranch with every order of buffalo wings. It didn't take long for ranch to replace blue cheese as America's buffalo chicken dip of choice. And the pairing also led many curious Americans to dip pizza into the dressing to see what would happen. Maybe it would taste great. Maybe a genie would appear. There was no way to know. And that's how discoveries are made. As it turned out, ranch tastes great on pizza. Pizza Hut caught on to this trend, and they became the first major chain to offer ranch as a dip option for their crusts. Ranch was turning up just about everywhere and being used on nearly everything. By the turn of the millennium, its rise to the top of American food lubricants was as inevitable as the changing of the seasons. In 2012, Clorox launched its Hidden Valley for Everything campaign, which sought to make ranch dressing into the new ketchup. 
and it took only seven years for Clorox to achieve its goal. In 2019, ranch officially surpassed ketchup as America's favorite condiment, with over $1 billion in U.S. sales. That's a lot of hot wings. And while other brands such as Kraft, Ken's, and Newman's Own have all created their own ranch dressings, Hidden Valley Ranch still dominates about half the U.S. market. Today, they sell 10 different bottled ranch flavors, including original, pickle, avocado, buffalo, buttermilk, bacon, cucumber, spicy, southwest, and coleslaw. They even still sell ranch in dry packets, with flavors such as original, spicy, buttermilk, zesty Alfredo, black pepper parmesan, rancho taco, buttermilk chicken, and buffalo ranch. Ranch's domination does not stop at food. Hidden Valley knows their brand and they've capitalized on their loyal audience. For those who want to rep their favorite creamy dip, they sell Hidden Valley t-shirts, swimsuits, oven mitts, tablecloths, and even an elf on the shelf competitor called Ranch on a Branch. Don't worry, it's exactly as creepy. But there is still one market that Hidden Valley has yet to tap into. Despite rumors that emerged in 2021, Hidden Valley has never conspired with the United States government to secretly hide COVID vaccines within their products. If salad dressings are so innocent, how come they're made in a Hidden Valley? <laughs> that ranch should be on top of a hill where we can all see it. But honestly, who wouldn't happily take a vaccine in ranch dressing form? Hidden Valley's massive success has led inspired innovators across the nation to create their own unique ranch products. For example, while ranch dressing is most popular among Midwesterners, that hasn't stopped ranch-themed restaurants from popping up all across the country. From ranch-flavored soda to ranch-flavored ice cream, these like-minded ranch fanatics have you covered for all your ranch dressing needs. But sometimes you want to sit down for a nice meal and enjoy your ranch buzz. Portland, Oregon is home to a popular pizza chain called Ranch, where all the square pies have been crafted specifically with ranch dipping in mind. After opening its first set of doors in 2017, the restaurant's meteoric rise has allowed it to serve pizza out of five separate locations around the area. Over in St. Louis, a restaurant and bar called Twisted Ranch sells 34 different kinds of ranch dressing, hopefully in shot glasses. You can buy their dressings by the 8-ounce bottle, but they also sell chic little menu items like the Twisted Mary, which is a Bloody Mary made with ranch vodka and a ranch seasoned rim. That will slap you out of a hangover every time. So what do you think? What's your favorite food to dip in ranch dressing? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other Weird History Food videos.